Hey guys, Dr. Cole doing another short video for you on a very controversial topic today, which is milk. Does it really do a body good? Should I be drinking it and who shouldn't be drinking it? I'm going to answer all your questions and break this down in today's video. We're going to start off with what I call the tale of two cows. Now, if you're like most people, when you think about dairy or milk, you probably picture a cow on a farm similar to this, where they're grazing, they're eating grass and hay, they're getting sunshine, exercise, drinking clean water, a breathing clean air, respected by the farmer, stress-free environment. That's typically what most people think about when we, when we picture milk or when we picture like a farm in our mind. And you know, the, the companies want us to think this way too. There's a reason why when you go grocery shopping and you look at the labels on some of your food, they show a picture similar to this because it's called subliminal messaging. And they want you to picture in your mind, this is where your milk's coming from. And you know, a hundred years ago, this is probably actually the case for most sources of milk. Like we're going to learn about today though, all sources of milk are absolutely not the same. And just like anything when we, when we purchase in the grocery stores, we have to be really diligent about investigating where the source of where this product's coming from, especially in regards to our milk. So that brings us to the tale of cow number two. Now cow number two grows up on a feedlot. This is where the majority of our cows spend their lives today, on a feedlot, standing in mud, standing in their own waste, not being fed, gra not being fed grass and, and hay, but eating grain, hybridized grain, genetically modified corn and soybeans, things that they are not designed to eat in nature at all. And it changes around the, the healthy fats, it denatures them in the cow, and it also changes around the structures and the proteins and the healthy fats in milk too. Beyond what they're fed, beyond the GMO foods that they're fed, these cows are rejected with antibiotics because they get sick often from this feed, and they're given hormones and steroids to grow bigger and produce a lot more too. So even though they're both cows, and even though they're both producing milk, we're gonna find out and discuss here that the quality of the milk coming from both these cows does dramatically different things to your body. So if you have allergies to milk right now, if you're dairy intolerant, lactose intolerant, autoimmune, you know, this video is for you. <clears throat> Starting off, let's talk about the healthy benefits that come from eating real dairy. So I, I love dairy. I'll tell you right now, I drink dairy. I have milk almost daily with my protein shakes. I love cheese, sour cream, cream cheese, kefir we, we drink here. So I love dairy, but it has to be a raw, organic, grass-fed milk. What that means, raw, first of all, it means it was never pasteurized and it was never homogenized. When I, when I was younger, we used to literally, before stores around this area started carrying raw milk, we used to literally drive our van. My, my mom would take us to local farms in the area and we would fill up our, our milk jugs straight from the farmer's cows there. So that was really getting raw milk back in the day. Today in Pennsylvania, we're, we're blessed to be one of the few states that's still allowed to sell raw milk and we can get it from some local health food stores that we'll talk about. But when you get raw grass-fed organic milk, meaning that cow ate grass and hay, as the primary source of its diet. Well, the, the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes, the proteins, carbs, and fats, all the benefits that come from that milk comes in what's called a bio-available, bio-utilizable form, bioactive, like you see on the screen here. Bioactive, utilizable, what that means is that your body can actually absorb and use those nutrients because they're in their full original state. They're not denatured, they're not degraded due to the, due to the processing from commercial agri big agricultural milk today. <clears throat> Excuse me. The healthy fats that come from this milk are in a one to one to one to four ratio. Now this is important too because you want to get full fat milk. Not 2%, not 1%, not skim milk. If you're getting raw organic grass fed milk, you want the full fat because there's a lot of benefits that come from those fats in raw milk. Every cell in your body needs fat. Every, every cell in your body has a protective membrane around a capsule made up of two layers of healthy fat. Those healthy fats are a one to one to one to four ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Without getting too complicated, this ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 is very anti-inflammatory. That's the way that you're gonna find in nature. That's the way God designed raw milk to be. And if you look at salmon, grass-fed beef, full fat milk, olive oil, all these healthy fats in nature, God designed them to be in that one to one to one to four ratio because it's anti-inflammatory. We're gonna learn as we process milk, or as we process anything, these fatty acid ratios become really, uh, they, they get way too high. So in, in milk, in this process, for example, sometimes it's as high as 30 to 50 to one, omega-6 to omega-3, that's very inflammatory. Another thing raw milk possesses, conjugated linoleic acid, CLA. 
Conjugated linoleic acid is a fatty acid that tells your brain when to start burning body fat. How important is that for us today? We're the heaviest nation in the entire world. We've cut fat nearly completely out of our diet since the 60s, yet we're the, we're the, we're the fattest we've ever been. So CLA, three to 500% greater in grass-fed raw milk versus pasteurized, homogenized, processed milk. So again, if you wanna burn fat better, you need CLA. It's naturally found in raw grass-fed milk. <clears throat> Colostrum. Colostrum is a, is a product that's destroyed in the processing of milk that's needed for the immune system development in babies and, and young cows in this case too. So a mother's breast milk, for example, is loaded with colostrum as healthy antibodies and we're called immunoglobulins that help to form the baby's immune system during the first days, weeks, and months uh, of the baby's life here. So colostrum destroyed whenever we process milk. Digestive enzymes. You know, if you take lactate right now, if you're lactose intolerant, it's really not that you're intolerant to dairy for most people. It's that when the milk is processed, it destroys all the enzymes that assist your body in breaking down that milk. So a lot of my patients that can't do milk, we switch them over to the raw grass-fed milk that has the full enzymes, the full healthy fats, all the bioactive and bioavailable vitamins and minerals, they do great on it. And if you ferment it into kefir, which go back and watch my uh, healthy probiotic gut healing foods video, I talk about kefir, that's probably one of the best ways to consume dairy. Uh, healthy raw grass-fed milk has good gut bacteria. You know, it is in and of itself a probiotic. And you know, the studies show that you really don't have to worry about milk not being pasteurized. So that, that's the big thing, right? Unpasteurized milk, raw milk can make you sick. Well, I will tell you this, if you're having milk that's raw from a commercial feedlot cow, like the one we showed here, I would never drink raw milk from this cow because you do run the risk of getting sick. What the studies show though, what most farmers do too, they go above and beyond even the FDA regulations for the processing of their milk and, and the testing regulations for it too to make sure that there's nothing harmful and no pathogenic bacteria cultures inside of that milk. The healthy raw milk is actually better for your gut and less risk of getting an infection than some of the milk found on our grocery store shelves from the feedlot cows. Finally, the average age of a cow is supposed to be around 10 to 12 years old. Most of the feedlot cows barely live past three years old because of what they're subjected to. So hopefully this gives you a good reason for all the benefits of getting the grass-fed, raw, organic milk into your diet. Now, switch and talk about the milk that comes from commercial, big agriculture feedlot cows. You know, I'll tell you, if you want to watch a good video, go on Netflix if you have it and watch Food Inc. I believe it's still on there right now. Food Inc's a documentary that will make you think twice about all the different types of animal products that we get into our diet, and it will make you never want to consume big agricultural foods like commercially processed cows, chickens, milk, cheeses, all those pigs, all, the, all those things. You'll think twice about it next time. <clears throat> all right. So what's the damaging effects? Why do we want to switch away from commercially fed cows and from pasteurized, homogenized commercial milk? First of all, we said that these cows, they are fed genetically modified corn, soybeans, and hybridized wheat. So 90% of all corn and soybean crops are GMO now. And these things are sprayed with massive amounts of what's called glyphosate, which is the active ingredient in Roundup. So not only does it just concentrate into the cow's tissue, but the residues of this Roundup, of the glyphosate, literally make its way into the milk. It's causing so much destructive properties in our guts today. If we look at a, one of the biggest reasons for why we're so sick, there are many of them today, why we're so sick as a nation. One of the biggest ones is the mass production of GMO foods that are sprayed with glyphosate, in my opinion. Because when it comes to the milk too, and for the cows, there's something called the law of biological concentration. Meaning when the cows are eating these foods, they have to eat an acre of wheat to make one pound of meat. That's how much goes into that. So when you're eating acres of the sprayed grain, it exponentially begins to increase inside the tissue of that cow, inside the DNA of the cow, and it changes it around molecularly, structurally for the DNA. So you get these residues in the cow's milk, in the cow's meat, when we're eating and drinking, when we're eating the meat or drinking the milk from those cows. The other thing is that they, why do you think that farmers don't feed them grass? I mean, why not just put a cow on a farm and then let it eat grass? Well, we're, the reason we're subsidizing corn and soybeans and hybridizing wheat is because that these foods make the cows produce more milk and grow bigger for slaughter too. 
Now, here's something else to think about right now. There's soybean oil found in nearly every packaged food today. High fructose corn syrup found in so many foods too. <clears throat> Our wheat today is not the same as it was before the 1940s when they started hybridizing these things. If these foods are making the cows grow bigger, what are they doing to your body? So another thing to think about and why we should even just cut these foods out of our diet too. All right, <clears throat> hopefully I'm not blocking the TV for you. They are fed massive amount of antacids because the cows don't want to eat these foods. Understand a cow would not find corn or soybeans or wheat in a field and begin eating it. They're forced to eat these things and because of it, they get such bad heartburn that they, they literally stop eating sometimes. So to have them continue to eat this, the farmers will put the antacids into the food so that calms the heartburn so they can keep eating, keep producing, and getting bigger. 70% of all antibiotics in America right now are given to our livestock. It's another big reason to go organic, locally farmed, grass-fed milk. Because if you've done your due diligence and you've read about the damaging effects from uh, antibiotics and there, there is a time and a place for them but most most people have had way too many rounds way too often way too early in life and it's caused a lot of GI damage and disruption I can't tell you how many patients I work with that will not get well until we fix their gut and most of the time the gut's been destroyed just due to the over prescription overuse of antibiotics so even if you're watching your own antibiotic consumption right now if you're drinking milk or you're eating meat that's been injected with hormones or steroids or antibiotics or, uh, hormone steroids and antibiotics, those things, the residues of them are making into your tissue too. So 70% of all the antibiotics, again, produced in America don't go into the human population. They go into our livestock, our chickens, our pigs, our cows. We talked about the fatty acid ratio in commercial milk, pasteurized processed milk. It's as high as 30 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3. That's an extremely inflammatory ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 because omega-6 on its own is inflammatory. You need the omega-3 to balance it back out again. This, this is the result of not having grass, which cows are meant to eat. The milk's pasteurized and homogenized, meaning when you pasteurize it, you're destroying all the good bacteria, all the, digi all the healthy digestive enzymes. You're breaking down the healthy fats and, and, re and basically rendering them useless in the body. And if we look here at this, uh, this chart from DrAxe.com, it breaks down the difference between the pasteurized and the raw milk, where with raw milk, each one of these vitamins and the enzymes and the immunoglobulins, the, the immune-building immunoglobulins, they are 100% active in raw, grass-fed organic milk. However, when we pasteurize the milk, you see a significant reduction, hopefully you can read this, even to the point with the enzymes, where they are 100% destroyed when you're having the, the pasteurized, commercial, homogenized milk. So another reason you get all the vitamins and you can break it down better too when you drink it the way that God intended for us to. Finally, they're fort fortified, means that they add nutrients back into it. If you ever see the words enriched or fortified, just think that your product is dead. Just understand that. There's nothing left in it, so they have to re-add things back into it. But it's never the way it originally was. You know, man is not as smart as God. And the synthetic vitamins that we add back into these products are things that oftentimes your body can't use. It can't, it can't absorb them correctly. It actually harms your body more than it helps it. Finally, we said the average age of the cow, only three years old for most of the, most of the cows that grow up and live on commercial feedlots. So hopefully for all these reasons, it's pretty easy to make the switch to the raw milk. And here's, here's the big takeaway I hope, you, I hope you take from today's video, which is commercially fed, pasteurized, homogenized milk is a dead, sterilized product produced by sick, cancerous cows that your body doesn't recognize. If your body doesn't recognize the milk, of course it's going to produce mucus against it. You're going to have digestive issues, IBS, bloating, gas, asthma and allergy issues getting worse because our body doesn't recognize it because it's a dead, sterilized product. <clears throat> All right. Now, that being said, I said most patients, if they just make the switch over to raw, organic, grass-fed milk, they'll be fine. That is true. I believe that. I've had milk my entire life. I don't believe some of the health experts out there saying that we're not meant to eat milk and only cows should be drinking cow's milk. Let's be logical. Look at all the cultures that preceded us on nearly every single country. They have a rich history of farming, butter, cow's milk, dairy, uh, cheese. They, they ate all these things from different animals too, not just cows, yaks, buffalo antelope, I mean, they were goats, they're farming cultures. 
We're designed to eat these things. We're not designed to eat the pasteurized versions of them. Now, there are two segments of the population that really probably should avoid milk altogether, at least for a little while. The first one is anybody that has an autoimmune disease. So if you have type one diabetes, if you have lupus, Hashimoto's, uh, Graves disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, any one of those things that fall under the autoimmune umbrella, then that means that you have a lot of food sensitivities and milk is one of the ones that usually should be cut out of the diet along with nuts and wheat and grains and other foods, at least for a period of 90 days. I have many patients who can add it back in later, but we have to get the immune system controlled first. We have to heal the gut first. Oftentimes that'll involve getting off of dairy for a little while. The second population, the second part of the population, <coughs> excuse me, that should avoid milk altogether is anyone that has an elevated reactivity on a food sensitivity test. Now, what does that mean? If we go here to this picture, this is a, this is a snapshot of one of the tests that I run for clients in my functional medicine coaching practice here, where when somebody comes in, we want to investigate if there's any food sensitivities that might be healthy for most people, but that their bodies are reacting against here. So what we're seeing in the top left of your screen here in the, in the dairy category, these, this is a bar graph of a person's sensitivity. We want it to look like this here, where there's almost no reactivity at all. I don't know if you can make out the colors in this video, but there's green, yellow, orange, and dark orange. Everything should be in the green. The more something's reactive, it means that the, the stronger the body's react, the, the higher this bar graph, the stronger your body's reacting to the proteins found in that food. It's an immune system response. Now this is called an IgG test. So this type of an allergic response it's not what you would typically think of with like a bee sting or a histamine, runny nose, allergic type reaction, pollen allergies. No, this is a chronic low grade response by your immune system that can cause anything from energy issues, low metabolism, weight gain, brain fog issues, joint pain, digestive problems. So if these foods are raised up, any one of those, they can be causing any myriad of those symptoms. Now, if you can't read the small print here, it says casein, cheese, cow's milk, mozzarella, whey, and yogurt. This patient of mine, her name's been blacked out here, was reactive to all of those. She has to be off dairy in this type of a case here for probably over a year because she's so reactive before we can add the dairy back in again. Now you see that there's one category here that's not reactive at all, and that's goat's milk. So this is a great segment to how we're gonna to end today because even if you're reactive to cow's milk, and even if you don't tolerate even healthy, raw, organic types of cow's milk, which most of the population can, nearly everyone will do fine on goat's milk. So there is a gene, why is this the case? There's a gene, we'll wrap up with this, there's a gene in cows called the A1 casein gene. It's a genetic mutation due to decades of all the breed, improper breeding techniques we talked about with their feeding the cows, what's being injected into these cows, hormones, steroids, antibiotics, vaccinations. It's literally caused a genetic mutation in most commercial cows on big agricultural feedlots called the beta A1 casein gene. Now what we're finding out is this gene is more allergic and inflammatory to our bodies than gluten. So if you're going gluten free but you still have dairy problems, it could be that you have an A1 casein allergy too. It stimulates a histamine response. It's associated with all the things we talked about, lymphatic congestion, suppressing your metabolism, weight gain, worsening of asthma and allergies, joint pain, brain fog, digestive issues, no energy, chronic fatigue. Those are all symptoms that can come from an A1 casein allergy. The majority of cow's milk today on the grocery stores, if you're going buying commercial milk, full fat, 1%, 2% skim, most of that milk has that beta A1 casein uh, gene bred into those cows. Now, the reason why goat's milk on this test was not reactive is because goats naturally cannot possess that A1 casein gene. They still have that A2 casein gene, the original form of that gene. So most people, if you're even allergic to cow's milk at all, will do fine, non-reactive at all on goat's milk. So goats contain the beta A2 casein gene, very safe type of dairy. We get goat's milk. I love making goat's kefir. And goat cheese is my absolute favorite of all the cheeses. If you haven't tried it, Go to your local health food store today, try some goat cheese, it tastes amazing. Now, in the resources we'll cover next, there still are some cows that have not had the improper breeding and all the vaccinations and the hormones and the steroids. There are still some breeds of cows that majority, that the majority still do possess that A2 casein gene that's healthy. Those would be Jersey cows, Guernsey cows, 
or brown Swiss. And so if you have access to a local farm in your area where the farmers are using these cows and they're having the, the raw grass-fed organic milk, that's a safe type of cow's dairy for you too, as long as it's an A2 casein gene form of milk. Now, some of my favorite resources here, if you are uh, in the Pennsylvania area, they actually do ship, uh, I think to most states now too via UPS, but my favorite resource is www.yourfamilyfarmer.com. They're an awesome farm located out in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. They farm according to old world uh, farming practices. You can, get raw, you can get raw milk, raw cheeses there, goat's milk, sheep's milk. Uh, you can get starter kits to make your own fermented foods there. They sell probiotic foods, grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, bones for bone broth. <clears throat> I mean, this, this farm has it all. So check them out. They're where we order a lot of our stuff from here. If you're one of my patients or if you're in the Greensburg area watching this video, every two weeks they drop ship to various points around the city here. You meet the farmer, pay them, and pick up whatever you ordered. If you're outside of the state or outside of their drop point delivery system, they now do UPS shipping directly to your front door too. The next brand I like, SwissVillaLLC.com. I'll put links beneath this video too for each one of these brands here. They don't sell off the website, I don't believe. You have to find like a local health food store in the Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia area. But they again have the raw cow's milk, goat's milk, and sheep's milk too. So we love Swiss Villa products. Uh, if you're in Greensburg, Pennsylvania, where my practice is located, we love Nature's Way Market. They carry these brands here. Uh, Nature's Way is, it has, a, has a lot of healthy raw dairy there. And so it's a place that we go often and send our patients to. So if you just want to pick it up directly from the store, if you live in the Pittsburgh area, hey, check out Nature's Way Market in Greensburg. And then finally, you will not find every single form of dairy in a raw source. At least I haven't. I've not found raw butter. I've not found raw sour cream, raw cream cheese. So in those cases, there, you just got to find what's best that you still can. So a, a really good commercially available product is called the Organic Valley brand. So... Uh, in Pittsburgh here, our biggest grocery store is called Giant Eagle. Wherever you live watching this right now, go to your big grocery stores there. Whole Foods definitely carries them. I don't know if Trader Joe's does. You have to check there. But Organic Valley brand, we will buy their butter, cream cheese, sour cream, uh, yogurts, and things. They, they taste absolutely amazing. They're not 100% raw. They're still pasteurized, but they're good organic grass-fed sources too. All right, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you find this video helpful, if you want more content like this, click the subscribe button. We're going to be doing these things weekly right to your inbox, so subscribe to our channel. You can also find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Dr. Zach Cole, D-R-Z-A-C-C-O-L-E. And if you're interested in becoming a patient, working us, or just want to learn more too, you can find us at our website at www.drzachcole.com, and I'll have links for all those beneath this video too. So hey, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and have a great day.